been known to be a little bit sniffy about headstocks, haven't I? I did once say that I wouldn't be seen on stage with the Harley Benton. Well, I'm going to revise that now. I've come to realise now that, that, that they're absolutely a force to be reckoned with. They're all so cheap, then, you know, they, it's difficult to take that seriously, isn't it? You know, if you're looking at it for paint floors, well, I haven't found any. You don't expect a decent guitar for £135. There's nothing wrong with it, is there? There's nothing wrong with it. Thanks for joining us. Welcome to The Guitaristas. So this week we're going to start looking at some of these ultra affordable Telecasters that I just bought. You saw the unboxing a couple of weeks ago. I've got four have just arrived. Um, this is the first one. I'm not going to, I'm going to spread this out, okay, over a couple of months because I know there's a lot of people that don't like Telecasters, so don't worry. It's not going to be all at once. I'll, I'll milk it over a, over a period, and I'll probably get some more as well. In fact, I've already ordered another one, so this is the first. It's the Harley Benton. Um, a very popular request, this. This is the TE. 62 DB, which I think is double bound, LPB, Lake Placid Blue. Looks nice, doesn't it? It's sparkly. I don't know if you can see that easily. It is sparkly. At first, I was a bit, ooh, it's a bit sparkly. But no, actually, it, it, it's, it's quite nice. It's a fine looking guitar. And, and First impressions are it's a it's a fine guitar actually certainly for 135 pounds this cost me 135 pounds and 10 pounds shipping from Toman in um, Germany. So um, what we're going to do today is we're going to take it apart. And we're going to have a a very close look. We're going to go through all the specs and and we of course we're going to play it loads and see what it sounds like, and then we're going to come back at the end and we're going to talk about it. So um, it's going to be half an hour or so, this deep dive review. So if you're in a bit of a hurry, timestamps in the description box. You don't have to listen to me <laughs> yak on <laughs> in my nonsensical manner. Um, you can skip forward. You can skip forward and hear what it sounds like or whatever, hear what I think of it at the end. Um, if, however, you have got a bit of time on your hands, go and put the kettle on, make yourself a nice cup of tea, or get yourself something a little bit stronger, perhaps. And some nibbles, because this is going to be at least half an hour. So get yourself settled down. Chill out, and uh, let's, let's get stuck in and, and have a good old nose at this Harley Benton and um, find out what it's all about. Let's do it. So Harley Benton, um, I got this... QC label with this, and it says here, since 1998. So, you know, they've been around for a while, haven't they? I've been doing this YouTube thing for about three years, so I think I had a little bit of catching up to do once I started reviewing guitars, and I was a little bit sniffy, I think, about Harley Benton and the headstock when I started. I've been known to be a little bit sniffy about headstocks, haven't I? Um, but, uh, you know, I think... I think it, I've I've come to realise now that, that that they're absolutely a force to be reckoned with, not because they're so popular, but because they're making good quality stuff. And uh, I think this is the third or fourth Harley Benton that I've had, and the others have all been great. And um, but they're also they're all so cheap. Then you know they, it's difficult to take that seriously, isn't it? But look, um, I think. What's happening here is buying power and common sense, German common sense perhaps, keep the prices down. 
This one here, 135 pounds this cost. I mean, you can see straight away that it, it, looks, it looks to be good value. It feels to be good value. So uh, I'm looking forward to, we'll find out in a second when I've stopped talking. Um, but just before that, I looked on the Toman website, 1,306 electric guitars on there. I mean, obviously, different colours of, of each model split that up. So you can probably, you probably divide that by, I don't know, three or four or something like that. Um, they've got hundreds of different models with price ranges from £58 to 549 English pounds. That's their most expensive guitar, 549 pounds. And that comes with a nice case and bundle and stuff. So, you know, they're, they're, they're firmly, they know what they're doing, don't they? So let's look at some specs. This guitar has a base wood body and um, what they call a, a caramelized Canadian maple neck. Caramelized always, gets me because it sounds like it's made of sugar but it's I think it's just hardened isn't it torrified is that another word for it heat treated I don't know I haven't done the research but that's what they call it anyway caramelized Canadian maple looks lovely doesn't it a vintage tint to it skunk stripe it's got an Indian laurel fingerboard um double binding which all looks really neat, actually. Um, you know, if you're looking at it for paint flaws, you, well, I haven't found any. And the scrape or whatever you like to call it, or whatever it is, is, is dead even. Yeah, it looks really good. Looks really good. Yeah, nice, you know, quite sparkly, but not not over the top. Um, we'll have a closer look at the, the frets and stuff in a minute, but with a quick feel up, it's, it's, it feels great. Feels good. I don't know what they call those. I'd call them medium jumbo. Um, it doesn't say what the nut was in the specs but it looks it looks like a I try and pick that up later maybe I just missed it oh 42 mil <laughs> yeah I've just looked at my notes it says 42 mil but it didn't say what it was made of um which I thought oh well that's quite narrow um what I did notice when I first picked I've been playing this at home for a couple of days incidentally I did notice that the um the neck I felt oh something about it, and I can see in the specs it says it's got a a modern D profile. So that might be what it is. Let's actually, while we're talking about that, put the neck profile and measurements up on the screen. Now, okay, here's the neck profile and measurements at the first fret, and here's the neck profile and measurements at the twelfth fret. So it doesn't look overly D-shaped, does it that? But I did notice it felt, it felt, it's, I don't know, it, I felt something when I started playing it. Of course, like all necks, you get used to them very, very quickly. So after five or 10 minutes, you don't notice it anymore once your hand adjusts to it. But yeah, I did notice that. Um, moving on, all, all classic style, Clusen style tuners um, with pressing bushings and, and the split post. So that's all very good and very traditional. Um, they call this deluxe hardware, but it's got the ashtray style bridge um, with the, the 60s style chrome barrel saddles with the string guides in them. So it's very, it's a 62, isn't it? Based on 62. So there's an attention to detail there, isn't there, that's correct. Um, it's got the standard T-style layout, one volume, one tone, three-way switch. We'll have a look in there later. 
Um, and it's got the standard um, pickup. It's all standard, isn't it? It's a, it's a, it's a standard T-style layout. Okay, we'll take the strings off in a second. Uh, before we do that, let's just weigh it. Here we go. Seven pounds, three ounces, which is 3.26 kilos. There you go. It's a decent weight. Okay, let's get the strings off. I noticed that this comes with fairly light gauge strings. I'm guessing nines. I'm used to tens, so I did. I noticed it. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I'm just going to see if the uh, the string ferrules came out, and they did. They're all pretty loose, so be careful if you do this at home. Oh, I flip it over; they're going to fall out, aren't they? Yep. Oh, we'll pop those back in a minute. We'll worry about that in a minute. Okay, we're going to have a closer look at the fingerboard and frets now. Uh, yeah, Indian Laurel. It looks, it looks nice. Looks nice enough, I think. And um, obviously more sustainable than Rosewood, so we can't really complain about that, can we? Um, I wouldn't notice the difference. Under the fingers, some of you might. I wouldn't. And the frets look very nice. Let's have a closer look at those fret ends. You know, for a hundred and thirty-five pound guitar, I'm not. I'm definitely not going to complain about those. Yeah, it looks very nice. Yeah. Sorry, one of those has fallen out at the moment. I'll pull that again. <laughs> um. So let's. Well, let's measure the pickups first, and then we'll have a look under the hood. And what I mean, of course, is let's take some pickup readings. We'll start on the Roswell bridge pickup, and we've got 7.49K, and the inductance of that is 3.43 Henry's. Let's go to the neck, 5.54K, and the inductance is 1.27 Henry's. Middle, because we can. 3.23k. There you go. Looking forward to hearing it. There you go. No expense spent <laughs> on the controls. Little mini pots branded CF. That's a first for me. I'm going to have to look that up. And the same on the um, the switch here. CF branded um, little. PCB board switch and some mini pots and um, yeah no no sort of no no money really spent there is there um, I'm sure it works fine but the um, the budget quality of this guitar is evident you know once you start. Looking at these things, which of course are very easy to replace and improve, uh, but equally probably work perfectly well. We shall find out in a minute. There you go, this is the under the scratch plate. Pick guard. <laughs> um, nothing much to see. I mean, I don't know if you can see that, but the the neck fits nice and snugly. You can see here on the, probably on that camera, it's got big old slab Indian laurel fingerboard, and um, this neck pickup. Is identified as TEA NT CR EOC 011 N. <laughs> yeah. And um, yeah, I don't, I don't really know what to, 
I don't know enough about pickups to have any idea what the design is, how this is wound, if you know what I mean. I know it ain't got those great bar magnets underneath that sometimes the Fender ones have and the Squire ones have. So, I, but I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing. So maybe you can let me know. I'll tell you what, it's got a bit of fluff there. I don't know what that is? Why has it got got a bit of? Oh, it's got a bit of fluff stuck on there. <laughs> maybe someone got their beard stuck on there before the paint dry or something. That's a bit weird. Anyway, that's that. Now what I'm going to do is just. Push that back into position and unscrew the bridge. Because fortunately, it doesn't look like the saddles are going to get in the way of me unscrewing at all. Uh, I, I played it and it seemed, I didn't notice any intonation problems, but I, I didn't. I didn't check it. Uh, I did play it above the... Um, well, we'll find out when we put strings on. <laughs> we'll have a look and see if, see if it's intonated or not. I think generally you'd expect those saddles to be further back. Anyway, we'll see. Right. Here we go. See if I can. Have I got enough room to flip it? Oh, only just. No. Oh yeah, I have. There you go. There's the earth wire there, and you can see. I mean, it's upside down, but it says T E T T A B T S E O C O one two B for bridge, and it's got um what looks like a a brass plate underneath that so that looks quite quite nice to my <laughs> uneducated eye and yeah i mean that's that's that really it's um and it's a basic ashtray style nickel plated bridge so uh, it all looks part doesn't it let's screw it all back together Put a new set of strings on and uh, plug it in. See what it sounds like. See you in a minute. Right, here we go. New set of strings. I've put a set of tens on it. Um, I'll be honest with you. I had to fight with the tuners a little bit today. Um, I'm going to talk about that when I come back after the playing, okay? Because they're not great. And I'll tell you why in a bit. Um, but first, let's, let's hear it unplugged first. For what it's worth. Got a nice spank to it, isn't it? Today's rig is the Princeton 65, as always, on the board. I've got a soul food and a rat. I might use them. If I do, I shall show you on that camera. You know the one. Uh, apart from that, there's there's nothing really in the chain apart from the looper. Um, little tiny little bit of nee bit of <laughs> bit of slapback, which I always have on there. It's hardly noticeable. No compression or nothing. So, you know, you're hearing the guitar, hopefully. Um, and it sounds like this. Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to just have a tiny little noodle around, and then I'm going to get into playing something. And if you watch on knob cam, you'll be able to see me switching between the pickups and, 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 and mucking around with the volume and tone controls, OK? So hopefully you'll get a, an idea of what the guitar sounds like in various different settings, OK? So, um, quick noodle, into some music, probably another bit of music, and then we'll come back and we'll have a chat about it and talk about what we like and what we don't like. Okay, here we go. <laughs> it's raunchy, isn't it? Thank you. 
cleans up.
There you go. Um, a bit of soul food there with the neck pickup just gives it a, a little bit of a an interesting creamy tone that, didn't it? It's quite nice. Quite like that. Almost sounds out of phase, doesn't it? I mean, it wouldn't be because it's on on its own. That's what it sounds like with the bridge. It's just the soul food, I think. It all works. I mean, it all works. There you go. Well, I don't know about anything else, but I was definitely getting into playing it this week, wasn't I? It's funny. I don't, I don't honestly know if that's anything to do with the guitar or just me <laughs> that I was, I was getting into the zone this week. And sometimes it's quite hard. This, you know, you come in when it's time to record the playing. <laughs> you've either got it or you ain't. You know, sometimes it happens and sometimes it doesn't. Take last week for instance, PRS, great guitar on paper. I wasn't feeling it, or I didn't think I was anyway. This week, there you go. <laughs> More of that coming up. The guitar, well, you know, it, it, it's. I've enjoyed playing it. I think I like playing Telecasters anyway. I think they fit me, if you know what I mean. Uh, and this one, there's it, nothing wrong with it, is there? There's nothing wrong with it. I mentioned earlier that I felt it, 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 my immediate impression of the neck was it was a bit something. Clearly, it wasn't. Well, it wasn't a, an issue. Um, I didn't. I didn't feel anything then when I was playing it. I got used to it very quickly. You do. Again, I said that earlier. Um, I didn't mention the scale length and fretboard radius earlier. I've just checked that. Appears to be a 12 inch radius, so it's quite a flat neck. So, you know, that might have had something to do with the ease <laughs> which I was apparently moving around. It's 20, 25 and a half inch scale length, so it's a fender scale length, same as a Telecaster. Um, it all worked. All the controls worked. So, you know, we shouldn't sniff at this apparently cheap looking stuff because it, it worked. It worked better than. Far more expensive stuff that we've we've had here on the channel, in terms of the you know the the roll off of the volume and tone controls, the pickups um, are, are, are what they are. They 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 sounded all right, didn't they? Initially, I thought the neck was a little bit on the kind of weak side, but you know, with a little bit of added gain. Uh, I was using the soul food this week, as you know, and it and it it, it coaxed some quite interesting sounds out of it. Uh, and obviously, depending on what rig you use, you know, it will sound different <laughs> for you at home if you've got one. But for I mean, I use the same rig week in week out, or I try to, so that every guitar is on a level playing field. Um, so if there's anything lacking, we'd hear it, and and I don't think we heard it. I think it sounded fine. The um, So that was all good. The, 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 the issue that I had with this guitar is with the tuners. Uh, first off, when I was originally tuning it up, they just felt cheap and stiff. And immediately you, you could feel, oh, okay. <laughs> you know, they just weren't turning that smoothly. Um, they held tune. There's no problem with the tuning stability, but they didn't feel good. The bigger issue was, I said uh, earlier in the review bit that they had these split post um, Fender style tuners. Um, no, not, not actually the case. Uh, well, it looks like they are, but actually it's only, it's only um, halfway. The, the post, oh, let me show you, okay. So this is a, a Fender style. This is actually a Goto one, but it's based on the Cluson. I say Fender, sorry, I mean Cluson, don't I? Style. Cluson style, split post tuner, which we all love. 
you've got is your string hopefully, hopefully you can see that on this camera up here you pop the string down into the hole and then you you go like that and you tune away and it locks it in and it's brilliant and there you go you can see how much of that is inside the post can't get it in there there you go uh cool it's about three quarters of an inch or something <laughs> i don't know how much that is in millimeters that these aren't split these are split post look you can see the split on the top but let me show you this illustration as i was trying to put the strings on earlier there's no hole the hole doesn't go down past the split as you can <laughs> see me illustrating here i'm trying to poke poke the string down i've already cut it to length at this point i'm trying to poke it down the hole and there's no hole the hole's gone it's blocked so they're um they're fake <laughs> they're fake um Split post tuners, or whatever you call them. I don't know if they're called split posts, but they're fake. They're not. They're not proper. And the problem is, the split is more of a a hindrance than a help, because obviously, if it just had a hole, you can poke it through and it will stay there. But as you can see, I'm ham-fistedly trying to now pull it round, and it keeps popping up because it's got nothing to hold it in. So <laughs> they're a bit of a faff. They are really a bit of a faff. And, um, well, I'll summarise, they're crap. And um, although, as I said, they hold to tune, so, you know, they'll do the job fine. Um, it's a bit, it's the only real disappointment that I've found with this guitar. Beyond that, I really like it. And it was £135. And you don't expect a decent guitar for 135 pounds and i've got to say that harley benton have produced a fabulous guitar for 135 pounds it might cost you well 50 quid to get a decent set of clusons to replace it but it'll be well worth it or just put up with it you know <laughs> you can it'll work so um my, what did I say, third or fourth Harley Benton, and it's totally lived up to expectations. Sounds good. Looks great, doesn't it? I mean, it really does look good. And um, I'm, I'm getting used to the, the headstock now. It looks okay. The, the vintage tint with the gold logo, it's quite subtle. I think that looks all right. I did once say that I wouldn't be seen on stage with the Harley Benton. Well, I'm going to revise that now. I'm going to say, if I get a chance to gig again, I'm going to make a point of being seen on stage with the Harley Benton. Um, if only <laughs> to stick two fingers up at some of the bigger brands that are getting very complacent these days with poor quality control and high pricing. You can forgive Harley Benton for putting cheap tuners on it because the rest of the guitar is fabulous value. So no doubt, well, I'll find out if you go up the range. You can't go that far up Harley Benton because they're most expensive guitars, five, four, nine. But I'm going to make my, I'm going to make it a point of getting one of their expensive guitars to see what that's like to see if there's anything I can criticise on it. Because even at 549, it's cheap, isn't it, still, really? So there you go. That's the first of my own brand T-Style reviews. I'm going to spread the rest over a couple of months so that uh, it doesn't get um, old for... Old? Yeah. It doesn't get old for people that don't like T-Styles. We've got, I'm going to, next one I'm going to do is probably the Antiquity, show you, which is a, a faux George Harrison Rosewood, isn't it? And after that, of course, I've got a Faisley and an East Coast that we're going to look at. But as I said, I'll be spreading that over a, a, a longer, a couple of months, basically. So, And it won't be next week. Um, next week, actually, I won't be here because I've got some proper grown-up work to do. So I'm going to have to take next week off uh, to, to get on with that. 
and and it's good to have a break from YouTube. I'm finding every now and then. So maybe this year, maybe once a month, um, I'm going to have a week off from YouTube just to <laughs> recharge the creative juices and, and do some proper work. Uh, but there's always going to be extra stuff on the TV channel. I'm sorry, I'm pointing. <laughs> that's because that's the address of the TV channel. So you can check that out for 30 days free and then stick around, please, and support the guitarists. It's $5 a month. And if I'm not here, you'll always find extra stuff there, extra content and new content to, <laughs> to, to stay in touch and um, entertain you. Is this entertainment? Or whatever it is, there's it will you know it'll keep me going until I'm back. So yeah, I'm not here next week. I will be there. There it is again, and uh, I'll be back here the week after. And I won't be doing a T Star review. I'll be doing something else. Uh, what will it be? I've got a couple of Maybacks to review. I've got a Kramer to review, haven't I? <laughs> With a, a Floyd Rose. That's going to be a laugh, isn't it? Maybe this. Let me know. Do you want to see the Kramer next? Anyway, there you go. Harley Benton, TE62. Highly recommended if you want a uber affordable, ultra affordable T-style that looks the bollocks and sounds well and plays well with slightly iffy tuners. <laughs> That's your boy. There you go. Uh, see you next time. See you next week on the TV channel, maybe, or here in a couple of weeks' time. Wherever you're watching, it's massively appreciated. So please keep doing it. Um, I'll see you next time. Cheers for now. Ta-da. <laughs>